Thank you, Chair, okay, and I wish you well in your new role. A significant amount of time was spent in our, all our offices to get passports through on, a on time for people in 2022. Uh, certainly difficulties like the passport office timeline is different to what is available online to the public. I am calling for additional resources to be provided to address the backlog of passports uh, yet to be processed. Can you confirm are there any passports and postal applications still on the system for 2020, last year 2022? Because I do believe that there are and if, they, if there are how long will it take to clear the backlog with the amount of people that, that are there at the moment? And what are you going to do to address the situation for people now that are waiting from last year to get their passports processed? No Thank you. No matter any, Again, I think no there's no backlog as such. We're not really meeting, uh, turning around times um, are being processed. Like basically, passport applications are being processed in line with normal turnaround times. Uh, as I said, 2022 was an exceptionally busy year with over 1,085,000 passports. 2023 looks like being similar with uh, 61,000 passports issued to date already. Uh, there's currently about 56,000 fully complete applications in the passport service system, including 10,700 paper applications. They're not considered outstanding as such because, as I've said, they're being processed in line with normal turnaround time. So there will always be people applying. The issue really is how quickly are we turning them around. They're now being turned around within the normal times. Um, and, and, and of course, the turnaround time for passport applications does not begin until the required supporting documents um, have been submitted. Thank you, I'm very concerned that uh, how many of our health workers, nurses, doctors, pharmacists, healthcare workers are going abroad to work. It is the hopelessness that I can see in them when I meet them that is the biggest issue. Tarnish, we know you and your government are going to tackle the issue of our healthcare workers leaving this country. And the reason I know is because they're coming to us for help for passports to leave this country when our health system so badly wants them. We have seen from the last speakers that were here, from our mental health, from our UHL hospital in Limerick, everything at the moment. When are you and your government going to tackle the problem to keep our, our health workers here? And as I said, this comes to me from passports that they are looking for us to help them to leave the country because they see no future here with the way the health system is run. That's more a question in the context of the, uh, the health, health department, but uh, I would make the point that... You were in health once upon a time. I was, time. once upon a time. But thousands of people are coming into the Irish Health Service every year also. I was recently at a, an event in respect of... Um, uh, nursing for very sick young children and two young nurses uh, had come back from Australia to work in the service in Ireland um, for an NGO, non-governmental organisation, but it kind of highlighted for me the fact that it's a two-way traffic. Uh, these were young Irish nurses who had been in, in Australia who now had decided to come back to Ireland. No, these particular nurses are here, but yes, others go out then, I accept that. Uh, because the health, the health, health world is highly mobile, always has been. We have to do more to attract and create better working conditions in our own health service to retain staff in our own health service. That is important. Call, 